Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. All right, today I have a new book for my inspiration, and I have a whole lot of things coming together from my experimenting. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to bring some things together, remind us of some ideas, and help us get some clarity on maybe the way we want to create, and all those kinds of things. And it's just fun. A uh, couple things. The stencils that I use today will be on sale, and those stencils, at least the ones that I have picked out so far, uh, are brand new. And I don't typically put new stencils on sale, but because I created them for this project specifically, I'm going to do it anyway. And I don't have any specific collage papers that I will be using or having in the library or anything like that. I'm using my scraps because I have a lot of them. <laughs> Um, and let's see, what else do I need to tell you? I think that is it. Um, if you're enjoying my channel, subscribe and like and comment. And I love hearing from you. Okay, so this is my book, Botanicum. And it is fantastic. And I'm going to show you in a second. But from this, I got a lot of ideas and I got some stencil ideas and a whole whole bunch more that I want to do. Um, but I wanted a couple specifically for this project. So let's take a look. So here is my book and I have so I have a ton of floral books. I mean a ton of them. But this one's just really, really, I mean look at, it's one, it's the size of it is, is, I love it. I love the I love these kind of black and whites. This is gr a green background, but still. Ah, so many, so many things. So many pattern ideas, so many just it's just a a piece of art every page. And this is um, curated by Kathy Scott and Kathy Wills Willis. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, if these some of the images were um, taken from, um, let's see, from um, older works, or if these were recreated by them. I'm not sure, but either way, every single time I turn the page, that's the sound that comes out of my mouth. Oh, it's just that there's so many uh, interesting patterns and these are the things these are the you know <clears throat> as we're looking for inspiration and ideas and we you know maybe feel stuck or whatever our, our books can it doesn't necessarily have to be like oh I'm going to paint a flower it could mean that I want to create this pattern and um, yeah I mean look at like this I could totally see something like this this pattern here, this I did, this pattern I did. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I just, every single page, like, look at the, the deep, like the pattern in here. Like, so if I were to create some, a piece of art, what, a, you know, I'm looking for some different types of marks. Oops. Um, this could be an inspiration spot, and I'm just, I tried to, and I still may try, but I was trying to recreate this as something like a stencil. These are um, algae. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I did create one that's an algae stencil, and I'll show you that in just a second. But every single page, this is the one I created right here. I tried this one. It's a, it was a little bit more difficult than I had time for. But this right here, look at this pattern. Uh, I could totally see something like that in a piece of, like in the background. Okay, I'm not going to go through every page. I would love to. And even the, see, look, at, I'm all excited. Even all the, just the examples of the, um, like leaves. And, and they're in a, like unexpected patterns. Like the leaves falling over like this is not necessarily how you would see them very very artistic and vintage and so I don't know if these are from you know plates or something from way back but I mean just the vines and everything I love it so let me show you oh, 
Come on now. So good. Let me show you the one. If I can find it. I thought I had it marked. Oh, I could look at the flowers. I'm sorry. I want to stay focused, Sean. Focus. Okay. This one. I love this. I love everything about this. This is ginkgo. And um, so what I did was I created like this portion of it as a stencil. And I'm going to use it today. And then I created the pattern for the algae. And I'll show you those. So that this is my inspiration. And there's a lot more to come from this. I just, I didn't have enough time to, you know, I'm like one step at a time, Sean. Settle it down. Okay, so let me put this back here. Okay. So I created two, three, five by eight stencils. And I've been playing because I've been testing them out to make sure that they're going to work. So there's my ginkgo. And I'm going, I, I was going to put the detail in the stencil, but I thought, no, I want to leave it and be able to do the lines myself and really kind of enhance it and shade it and stuff like that. So this is a 5 by 8 stencil and um, that'll be available in the shop and that's the ones that are on sale. And then look at my pattern. So I did, what I did for this one was I did two smaller ones and they're masks. And where's the other little one? It's in here somewhere. I know, I know it. Just had them all. Okay, well anyway, there's two masks to this one. And then I did a bigger one. I just had everything together. Oh, here it is. Then I did a bigger one, which is, oh, there it is, stuck together. See, look at, look at how, ah, oh, love it. Absolutely love it. So here's this one, it's a bigger one. And what I like is, is that, so you have the mask, you can do just the mask, or you can, you know, put your stencil down and then put your mask in it and stencil away, just like you normally would. And I'll show you, I'll give you an example of that. So, where is it? So here, so here's, um, like I put, I did the background and then I stamped this one. And then I did the background, and then I put my my um, put this down like that, and I stenciled that. I actually brushed it out, and then I brought my stencil back in and stamped it, or stenciled it. So this was stamped. So I did the background here, then I painted this, and I put it down, and so you get the reverse. So lots of versatility there, um, but I played and played because I love this pattern. I love it. So let me just show you. This is for for my piece, but um, look at look at these patterns. So I have more. I have more to say about that. Look at this is the big one. This is the big one. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the other thing that I have discovered is wet strength tissue paper. So I bought a stack of it. Now, let me just tell you, it's not cheap. I bought a lot of it because that's how I am. Um, I just knew I would use it no matter what. Um, and that's what this is. This is wet strength tissue paper. And it's, it's, um, stands up to all kinds of stuff. I can't wait to truly experiment with it because um, I painted full on. I, got, I, I did like lots of water on this and it did not tear. It did not. I mean, it is tough and it's hard to actually like um, tear itself. Um, so I did lots of water. Um, I did lots of stenciling. That's actually deli paper. This is wet strength tissue paper. This is wet strength. And there is like a rough side and a shiny side. And I worked on the rough side thinking that the shiny side would act as 
somewhat of a barrier to keeping the fluid from moving around, but it just, it did its job and did not, like this one here, I um, stenciled it out and then came back with water and rubbed over it. I love this look, by the way. And it's super, super sturdy. Then, so I'm like, okay, well, where's my journal at now? Here. <clears throat> so then, um, and this is still, no, it's pretty dry. Uh, I took one of the patterns that I had done with the wet strength tissue paper and put it down to see what it was like and I put it down and I picked it up and I moved it around I kind of pulled it a little bit super sturdy I'm really excited about this it gives me a little bit more haze than maybe the regular tissue paper but not not a ton because like this is really dark and regular tissue paper would give me some kind of shadow too but you can see how around it it looks pretty good so that's really exciting. I can get it really wet and not worry about it tearing and I can kind of move it around and shift it. Cause like once you put tissue paper down, it's over. There's no, there's no going back, regular tissue paper. So um, that is, and I got my wet strength tissue paper on Amazon um, and I looked for smaller batches. There are some on Etsy. Uh, but I, I went ahead and bought the big batch. So um, I'll link to that. And, um, you know, it's kind of expensive. So, but at least you can see it. And, you know, maybe if it's something that you want to try, you can get a smaller batch on, from some sellers on Etsy, I think. Um, okay. So my plan. Now, I got all excited. <laughs> That's how it should be though, right? As we're creating excitement. Okay, so what I know for sure is that I want to use my book page here. And this is playing off of several Sunday inspiration projects, which is what I love, which is why we do this practice. This is why we experiment. We try new things. This is all the reason why, because we gather tools and information to build our repertoire of how we create. So I want to cre create on a book page because I really liked the journal page that I did with the inspiration from, I forget the artist's name. I'm going to use my tissue paper here and I'm going to kind of create with bits of paper around it. But I, what I want to do for my background is take inspiration from last week's Sunday inspiration. So two weeks ago was a journal page. Last week was um, the one where I kind of tore up the background and had a big flower at the top. So I want to kind of get a grungy background and I probably won't go into as much detail of tearing things up and I'm going to put a bunch of papers down and kind of crisscross them and really make them um, kind of textural so that when I come to put my gesso over the top I will get some real good um, texture and then I'm going to probably sand it back a little bit to reveal the edges of the paper. I loved that part of um, last week's um, project. Then I want to use my um, my texture tools, my pattern tools here and I want to add some probably super heavy gesso in just spots and I haven't decided which size or what I want to use but um, just with white gesso that way when I come back and do my wash and all that kind of stuff this texture will show up and it'll be this pattern because I want to come back with my focal point here my ginkgo and I'm gonna you know do add my lines and add my details and all that kind of stuff and um, I'll add some pattern with my smaller ones. You know, I'll put my paper down, I'll put my ginkgo on top, I'll, you know, do all that. I'll add papers around it, and then I'll kind of create some pattern with, um, you know, my stenciling. Um, that's my thought anyway. And I want to take two a little bit from um, the journal page that I did where, you know, because she had like random little bits of paper. I want to kind of do that kind of in my style 
um, and have it be the, those some of those little bits kind of bringing those back in kind of a lot of the projects that I've done over the last couple of weeks I'm kind of merging all of those together and that is what it's all about okay this is a 12 by 12 MDF board I will be using um, my color palette I'm, I'm thinking is going to be greens and blues and so I will be I've got some Prussian blue and I've also got my Payne's gray uh, what did I do with Payne's gray I've got Nova colors Payne's gray and then I've also got my uh, Payne's gray ink because I'm going with the green on my inko I thought the the um, green in the background with you know some creams and like I've got my house paints that I have been experimenting with um, this is cottage white and then I have some other kind of neutrals as well um, raw umber of course I will have raw umber that will be um, and that's all I know at this point what I will be doing uh, that is it. Now I have a great meaning for this piece too. So, um, all right, so let's talk about that. So, um, let me get to, I've got my phone out here. So I have, I, um, subscribe to Morgan Harper Nichols, like online daily affirmation kind of thing. And I upgraded my subscription to a deeper kind of walk with, you know, her kind of, it's, it's like a devotional every day. And you get to, um, it gives you an opportunity to journal, it gives you an opportunity to put an affirmation to put in your word for the day, that kind of thing. And I love that. Love it, love it, love it. But as I was reading to uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, no, the day before something like that. Um, <clears throat> I'd kind of been already been thinking about this. But um, it said, <clears throat> it's titled, excuse me, my, my allergies and the air quality is really, really bad where we're at. So um, it's called Practice Hope by Starting Small. And um, sometimes we need to start small in all things. And, and I like that. I, I think about that when it comes to creating. Sometimes we want inspiration and we want new ideas and we want things, but we want it to be some really grand, like, explosion. And I'm, I'm hoping that I'm modeling for you over the last year how being curious about even the smallest things, about different colors, color palettes, patterns, shapes, different, whatever it might be, that it's the small things that build up to the great things and the great ideas. And, you know, like I said, I'm getting one tool to put in my tool belt every time I experiment and try something new. But she goes on to say, um, it takes a lot of energy to main, maintain hope for the future. And sometimes it feels daunting these days because we are constantly reminded of everything that is wrong and we never see the good stuff. And um, <clears throat> she said, but what if we are mindful about the small things? Tomorrow's sunrise or this past weekend's delicious meal, which brings us a sense of warmth and delight even when the word, world around us feels cold. She said, how about a song or what you've written today? or what you've created today, or what you've, it, the small things, you put papers down, you tested color, you tried a new stencil, you picked up the tissue paper, the small things. The small things lead to big, big hope, big, big joy. It's the small things. We have to do the small things first. I always say one step at a time. That's what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. So she says, here's to looking forward to the small things, the minor details that might not seem to make a big difference, but ultimately end up reminding us that we are in fact alive and part of something larger than ourselves. 
It's worth getting excited about any little thing that reminds us it's worthwhile to keep living with a heart that is open to possibilities of what's to come. It's the small little things. And so this piece is going to be called Practicing Hope because that's what I that's what I've been doing the hope to be inspired the hope to be encouraged to the hope to be encouraging the hope is small things it's the small little bits it's the small words that we say to our the people that we love it's the small the smile the opening of the door it's the thank you it's the phone call it's the paintbrush it's the it's the small things that bring us to greater things. And I'm hoping that you are encouraged by the small things that I'm learning and the small things that I get excited about and that it encourages you to do the same. So every single day, I'm practicing hope as I practice this life that I live creating art. I'm practicing hope. And I hope that you get to practice hope today. All right, my loves, I hope your Sunday is restful and peaceful. And I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.